tomorrow night, make sure you go watch Bones and I play some video games over on our Twitch channel. There is a link in the description down below. We're gonna play some games, have a good time. It's at 8 p.m. EST. See you there. Okay, on to the topic at hand. There are a few things I see that are common among a lot of beginner artists. I also see these things in professional artists' work, and I am very guilty of doing these things from time to time. Today I'm just gonna talk about them and how to not do them, because I think it'll benefit lots of people. <laughs> and myself. It's always good to do a reminder on these things. Oh yeah, so the first mistake that I see all over the place that drives me nuts is when people will do chicken scratch lines instead of beautiful, fluid, luxurious lines. So what do I mean by chicken scratch? So chicken scratch is when, in order to draw one line of your piece, you do like a thousand little tiny lines to get that line. Like, um, depending on who you are, it can, you can have a line that looks kind of, like, tight and clean by doing chicken scratch, but for the most part, it leaves really messy lines. It lacks confidence. It can make your art look really messy or overly busy. Um, and it's bad for your wrist to do lots and lots of little tiny strokes when you could be doing one big stroke instead of all of them. And I think a lot of people do it. One, I think it does come from a lack of confidence. Um, I guess a lack of practice, I guess, kinda. The effect you want to do is you wanna do one single line. And in order to do that, you like, it takes, it can take several attempts. Um, you know, you wanna use your whole arm instead of just your wrist. But you basically, whenever, you know, you have to make a line, you want to do one movement, not a million tiny little ones. And like, I knew when I was beginning and doing art before I, I learned this, um, the reason I would do a lots of tiny little lines is because every time I'd put down a line, it wouldn't go where I wanted it to, or um, it didn't look as cool as I wanted it to. Uh, so I would do a whole bunch of little tiny ones so that I could slowly build it to where I wanted it to go. But honestly, like I said, it just made my artwork really messy. Uh, so since learning that, I have started doing one line. In digital art, I do a lot of, like, control Z. Um, and when I do traditional work, I do take a little bit of time to, like, plan out my strokes, figure out where I'm going to put my pen and where it's going to end. And if, honestly, in traditional art or digital art, if I make a mistake, sometimes I'll just leave it because <laughs> that's the beauty of it. So, number two. The second thing that I see a lot of beginner artists do, this one I'm mostly talking about digital art. I haven't seen a whole bunch of it in traditional, but it happens all over the place with digital artists. Um, and this is what I call Frankensteining. So what happens when you do, like, Frankensteining is where you'll have a sketch, say, and, you know, something about it looks weird. Maybe the head is too big, maybe the arm isn't where you want it to be, whatever it is. Maybe the eyes are in the wrong place. So instead of, like, redrawing what you've drawn, you take the little lasso tool and you surround the thing that looks weird and you move it around or you stretch it or you squish it or you make it bigger or smaller and you basically make your sketch by, you know, stitching a whole bunch of pieces together instead of redrawing it. The reason this is not ideal is because you may be making the problem worse. I think um, it can become very clear that something is Frankenstein together because, you know, each little piece of it might look nice, but if you look at, say, like, the piece as a whole, it doesn't all fit together quite right. Um, and I think you can instill a lot of mistakes and errors into your work, such as, like, you know, perspective might not be applied to the thing properly, or, um, you know, your art might slant, or, um, or something like that. And it can lead to, like, bad proportioning on, say, your figures, or, um, you know, it can lead to your drawings not looking like they're part of the same universe, like different parts of it will feel very different. And I know it's very tempting to do this in digital art because you have the ability to like select parts and move them around until they look right. But here's the thing, when you are running into this problem, you know, you're moving things around and they're not quite right still, the truth is you kind of just have to get rid of the bad sketch. And this can be really frustrating, especially when you're on a deadline. That's that's what I ran into a lot when I was beginning art, is like, I didn't know how to fix 
my art and make it look nice. So I would just move things around until it felt okay. And I really wanted to get it out because I had comic pages I had to put out. And I honestly didn't have like the, the art skill that I have now um, in order to fix it. You know, I didn't understand the proportions correctly. I didn't understand the perspective, whatever it was. There was just a piece of knowledge that I didn't have. So I didn't know how to fix the thing on my own. So what I would do is I would just Frankenstein things together until it looked kind of okay. However, now what I do instead is when I have a broken sketch or something that isn't working, what I'll either do is I'll throw away the sketch entirely and start again. Anything that I've made in that sketch that I liked, I can recreate it. Um, and so can you, because if you did a thing good once, you can do a thing good again. It's, it's, it's there within you. <laughs> um, so most of the time I will get rid of the sketch entirely and start again and give it another try, maybe putting down better foundations or whatever it is I need to do, adding a perspective grid, whatever. Or sometimes I will just throw down the opacity of the broken sketch and try again on top of it. That way I can go over the things that I really like again um, and still stare at what I did before and make it better. And I find redoing the sketch or the piece really just fixes it. It gives me an opportunity to make the thing better as a whole rather than just focusing on the little parts. Once you understand where something is broken, it gets a lot easier to fix it instead of trying to jam all the broken pieces together until they work. And finally, number three, I see a lot of beginner artists who are really focused on outline rather than understanding the forms of what they're drawing. Uh, so what I mean by forms is like um, when you're drawing something, even if it's like a cartoon or anime or something, um, even if it's like a 2D drawing, you want it to feel as if it is 3D. You want to kind of mimic reality and make things look like they have volume and mass instead of making everything look very flat. And I think it's very common for people when, uh, you know, you're learning art and getting into things is you tend to think in outlines. You know, if you're drawing a hand, you draw the outline of the hand instead of figuring out like, you know, turning the fingers into cylinders and, um, you know, adding perspective to the hand etc. And I think part of it is because it's a lot easier to focus on outlines instead of trying to figure out like the the form or the musculature of something. However, when you only focus on the outlines, like I said, it makes everything flat. It can make what you're drawing look weird because it looks flat or it can make things look really wonky and out of proportion or skewed if you don't have, you know, a good construction underneath your work. Um, so the best way to fix a heavy reliance on outlines and your work looking really flat is to do construction lines underneath whatever you're drawing. Um, commonly, I do this with faces. I always do the little crosshair on the face to figure out where the eyes are so that they're aligned. Because I know personally, if I try to just like eyeball it, the eyes are not going to be lined up whatsoever. Um, and this can apply to anything. I always, even if it's just a simple drawing and something I've drawn like a million times, like a face or a body or um, a box, like I always try to sit down, figure out the form underneath, uh, try to understand how things look in 3D, and then I draw all my lines on top. And you'll find that even if you're not showing all of that like 3D form beneath everything, because like when you're inking, you might be literally putting an outline on things, you'll find that like um, you get a lot better suggestion of form when you understand the form underneath things. It'll make things feel less flat. You can still simplify your work. Um, you know, it doesn't all have to look like 3D rendered and um, like realistic. But if you understand the form, your stuff will definitely feel more fully formed and 3D. There's, there'll be a better suggestion of it. So those are my, my three things that I see a lot in um, beginner artists work. And I hope that these tips have helped you a little bit. These are all things I struggled with when I was beginning art. Um, and I still, like I said, I forget to do them all the time. Sometimes I won't put a crosshair on the face and the eyes will be off. Or I will be really having a bad art day and I'll try and Frankenstein my sketch together. Or I'll do a chicken scratch line because I just can't make the line do what I want it to do. So, you know, if you are still doing these things, that's okay. I guess maybe try out my suggestions if it's something you're frustrated with. And I wish you all good luck and good vibes with your art. 
And I guess that's all I have today. Thank you so much for listening. Um, I hope my visuals were helpful. Yeah, go check us out on Twitch. Bones does work streams uh, through the week. And we do our game stream on Friday nights. So go watch us and hang out and chill with us. And I guess I'll see you guys next video. Okay, goodbye.